Hey friends, my name is Brian Johnson, and I am one of the directors with Exponential's Microchurch Next Channel. And we're so glad that you're joining us for this video on how microchurches plant the gospel incarnationally in a context. Uh, to begin, we want to set the stage with our core conviction, which is this, the gospel is the power of God for salvation. It's the good news that changes everything. And in this series, we will explore these two essential questions for every microchurch and every ordinary person on the journey to make disciples, which is this, what is the gospel and how do we share it? And if we want to see the gospel begin to change the everyday stuff of life, we need to equip ordinary people with the language and tools that they can use to address the questions their families, their friends, their coworkers, and neighbors may or may not even know they're asking. The gospel is worthy, like nothing else, of genuine, childlike, spellbound wonder and then full surrender. And the journey of transformation begins with our own understanding, communication, and embodiment of the gospel that's coming into alignment with Jesus' understanding, communication, and embodiment of the gospel. Disciple-making flourishes when the transformative power of Jesus' way of being is actively embodied within a community, which you'll hear us refer to as a gospel presence. And when it's visibly exemplified in our actions, which we refer to as a gospel demonstration, and when it's verbally communicated through intentional sharing, which we refer to as a gospel proclamation. Our hope is that this series will equip microchurch and disciple-making leaders like you and others like you who are in the thick of it in their context. From the presenters, you'll learn from their years of experience, their victories, and their failures as they share the culmination of their spirit-led, scripture-grounded discoveries and practices. Now, before we move on into the actual equipping around what the gospel is and some practical tools and sharing the gospel, we want to ground this series in a five-phase movement that we in the Kansas City Underground call the Missionary Pathway. Uh, the Missionary Pathway has been the framework we have used to, um, to organize the training, the articles, the interviews we've been culminating at Microchurch Next. So this video series will reiterate that if we make disciples, microchurches will emerge. But disciples aren't made if the good news of Jesus isn't being lived out among a people. That's that gospel presence component. Nor will we make disciples if the good news of Jesus isn't being demonstrated what we call a gospel demonstration. And if the good news of Jesus isn't being shared through our words, that's that gospel proclamation piece. So for the next few minutes, I just want to share with you the missionary pathway so that this series is grounded in the flow of these five phases. Uh, so just a quick note that we always like to share, the missionary pathway is not a tool that we in the Kansas City Underground made up on our own. One of our directors had the privilege of spending time with a disciple-making movement leader in East Africa. And this leader had five phases posted on the wall in his training space that outlined what we see in disciple-making movements both globally and historically. And we would uh, iterate along with this leader that these phases are descriptive of what we have seen, whether it's the earliest disciples, the Celts, the Moravians, or even what we see happening in the global South today in places like India and China. You can also see the life of Jesus within each of these phases, and we'll talk about that as we go through them. Now, while these phases are descriptive, and while they're not necessarily perfectly linear, we do see a flow, and we have a conviction that we might receive them as somewhat prescriptive for our own context based on the repetitive nature in which they emerge time and again. And with that said, we highly encourage contextualization. When our friend first saw these phrases posted on the wall in East Africa, there were different words that were listed. And I don't just mean a different language. There were different phrases, but they communicated the same concepts that we'll walk through in a moment. And we've applied our own phrases for the sake of the Western context in which we live and the specific work we do. Uh, for instance, if the phrase live like a missionary is problematic in your context because of the baggage that the word missionary carries, you might consider a phrase like incarnational living. The phrasing is not as important as the concept that's communicated. Now, with that said, we'd encourage you not to change the concepts or the flow. That part is quite important. 
And if you're looking for more tools for any of these phases, we'd encourage you to spend more time digging through the resources we've collected at exponential.org forward slash microchurch dash next. We've created resources like the short ebook, Extraordinary Prayer, that will give you handholds on how to pray in extraordinary ways for a disciple making movement to emerge in your context. All right, that's probably enough of an introduction. Let's quickly walk through the missionary pathway and get you into the resources on gospel planting. Uh, so as you look at this image on the screen, you will see five phases. You'll see a general flow and that the movement of these five phases leads to a reproduction of the missionary pathway as new leaders emerge. But I also want to encourage you to think in a three-dimensional way. Well, while each of these uh, circles that you could see here can be thought of like a stepping stone to the next, imagine as well that you're looking down into five buckets. Each of these buckets contain tools and resources. And we, we don't have like an exhaustive list of tools and resources, but we do continually create tools and resources that can equip you along the journey. Again, to discover more, you can look at exponential.org forward slash microchurch dash next. Or you can sign up for the toolkit at kcunderground.org forward slash toolkit. So phase one in the missionary pathway is extraordinary prayer and fasting. In this phase, we want to follow Jesus in prayer. Think about how the Gospels set up Jesus' three-year ministry. We see Jesus go down to the water. He asks John to baptize him. He comes up out of the water. And the Spirit of God descends on him in the form of a dove and says, This is my Son, whom I love in whom I'm well pleased. Just know this, your heavenly father feels the same way about you. That's some serious identity verification going on there. After this, the gospels record that Jesus went off into the wilderness for 40 days to pray and to fast. And I often like to say, if you're tracking Jesus through the gospels, if people are looking for Jesus and they can't find him, he's probably off praying somewhere. This is his continual practice. He would spend all night in prayer. He would get away to pray. He would go deeper into the garden to pray. He wanted to spend deep, intentional time with his father. And he says things like, I only do the things I see my father doing. How does Jesus know how to join the father where he's already at work? He spent time in prayer listening. So as everyday disciple-making leaders, we can say the same things. But to do so, we need to cultivate a prayer life where we listen for the Father's voice and then respond in obedience. This is not some new heavy work that we have to figure out. We have full access to come before the throne of grace with confidence. And as everyday disciple-making leaders, we begin here. And this is really the one phase we never leave. Prayer precedes movement. Now, while we will always be praying these prayers, Jesus, where are you already at work? And Jesus, how can I join you? We do discern at some point the particular context we feel Jesus is sending us into to make disciples. Now, this might be a specific geographic neighborhood, or it might be some network of relationships to which we feel a particular affinity. This is when we move into phase two of living like a missionary. Again, these are not linear. Jesus was living like a missionary, even in Nazareth, where he's learning how to be human. He's learning the stories. He's learning the language and the songs. He's learning the festivals and the rhythms of the people. And we do see that Jesus moves intentionally in his ministry toward people. And that's what this phase is all about. Living like a missionary means that we live like Jesus. And as Eugene Peterson puts it, we put on flesh and move into the neighborhood. Phase two is where we learn who people are. What are their joys? What are their hangups? What are their habits? What do they enjoy? In this phase, we live the bless rhythms. Bless is a simple set of missionary rhythms. It's an acrostic that stands for begin in prayer, which is a carryover from phase one. Listen and engage. So we ask good questions and we learn all we can about people. It's usually in listening that we learn what good news will be to people. And we eat together and share meals. We serve in meaningful ways. And ultimately, we get to share the story of how Jesus changed us and how the gospel changes everything. And that moves us to phase three of gospel planting. And that's what this series is all about. Before we go there, again, just take a moment to think about how Jesus did this so well. 
He engaged fishermen and he got in the boat with them. He engaged the lepers and he entered their spaces. He physically touched them when no one else wanted to. He learns and asks questions about the woman at the well and he meets her in her lonely space. And when Jesus calls Matthew to follow him, what do they do that night? They throw a party at Matthew's house and they invite all of his tax collecting, notorious sinner friends. Jesus is with people. We need to embrace being with people in their spaces before we go on to phase three of planting the gospel. And it's actually, again, in the being with people and being a gospel presence that we earn the right and learn the best ways to demonstrate and proclaim the gospel in the everyday stuff of life. Again, that's what this series is about. And in the next few videos, we're going to give you an overview of holistic gospel planting. What does the gospel mean? What, what do we mean when we use that word? What do we say? And then we'll give you four specific tools that we will begin to equip you to actually do this work. One will help you understand where people are coming from and how they are journeying toward greater surrender to Jesus. The next will guide you in simple conversational tools that you can use to navigate casual conversations toward meaningful and spiritual conversations. The third tool is not only an overview of the meta narrative of scripture, it also becomes a tool to share your own story in light of the framework that we see in scripture when we view it in its entirety. Now, the fourth tool is a training on discovery Bible studies. And this practical tool is used in movements across the globe as a discovery and obedience based framework on inviting people to discover Jesus in the scriptures as they surrender more and more of their life to him. And the final video will cover what we consider to be perhaps the most important tool, learning how to gospel yourself daily. If we don't learn to speak the good news to ourselves first, to our own deepest needs, we'll never learn how to practically share the gospel with others in the everyday stuff of life, in their moment, in the things that they're struggling with, like how to speak the gospel in such a way that it is good news in that moment for them. Now, the final two phases of the missionary pathway are the church emerges and multiplication. As we make new disciples by planting the gospel within already existing networks of relationships, the extended spiritual family, or what we call microchurches, begin to emerge. And when disciples are formed in this way, and when they enter into a family in this way, it's quite natural to raise them up to begin praying extraordinarily for a new context into which they're sent to live as a missionary and plant the gospel so that new extended spiritual families might emerge that they become the spiritual mothers and fathers of. We won't get into these phases in this video series, but the tools that you receive here can continue to be used to form and mature those families as they, as they grow and as they multiply. So we hope you enjoy this video series. We hope that you're encouraged and equipped by these tools. We also hope that you'll continue to explore the resources around these final two phases at exponential.org forward slash microchurch dash next.